Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back for episode four of Netflix's One Piece. The last episode, like I'm so like entrenched in the story and just the 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 vibrance of this world, the richness of it. You know, three episodes in, at the end of the last episode, when those credits rolled, I was distraught. <laughs> I really just wanted to dive right into the next episode, but it was already like five in the morning when I recorded the last one. So I had to get some sleep before I had to go and uh, actually start my day job or anything like that. So there is that. But if we're back, we're diving into episode four. I need to see what happens next. And that is the the great tell of a fun show, man, is if you're just like hungering and hankering for more. It's the kind of all that's been on my mind since the last episode that we watched together. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop in. If you want to see the full length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you got my old channel, gets you access as well. It's a watch along format. You just need to sync up your own footage with the time code. See my reaction the entire episode over there. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q and A's, behind scenes footage, try to make it worth your while since you're going to support the channel. But guys, I'd really appreciate it. If you enjoy the reaction, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already, and let's go ahead and jump into episode four. The pirates are coming. Here we go. Dude, I bet his neck is jacked up. He was just lugged down there, but they did give him his swords, so might be able to use those to and crawl out, or maybe there's just enough regular freaking finger holds in these old cobblestone wells. Oh, yo, look at this one. It's Zorro themed. Captain Kura of the Black Cat Pirates. Yes, long claws, tiny glasses. Impossible. My father, Axan Morgan, killed him years ago. Any marine worth their salt knows that. Hmm. Well, he definitely didn't do it very well. Someone has to stop Kuro. I can't do it by myself. It's okay. We're here to help. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking get out of here, Farquad. Is this going to be all up to Nami? That would be a great switcheroonie for how things have been going, especially considering her kind of like heart to heart moment with Kaya in the last episode. You're not a cook and I'm not a maid. We have pirates. Sell yourself, sure, champ. But I can't hear myself think over your inbred nonsense. Wait, what? <laughs> Go ahead and toss him in the well with a green head of. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh God, how's this going to go down? We're looking for a fugitive. Goes by the name of Luffy. Luffy? Luffy, why yes, I do know that name. I have one of the staff members keeping an eye on now. Butchie. The Marines are here. <laughs> That's so weird. But what will destroy our talks? You drank enough of that soup to kill a sea beast. Stick to the captain's plan. Maybe it'll just kind of conk him out. Maybe his uh, rubber constitution will spring him back. Good thing we have marines like yourselves to keep the ace blue safe. Now, if that is all, I really must... Return. God, this guy is good. What's wrong with him? Right. Insatiable appetite, I suppose. For a pirate, nothing is ever enough. Good thing we have marines like yourselves to keep the ace blue safe. Now... If that is all, I really... God, this guy is good. Also, a little Just lucky. Questions. Of course. God, he's tried so hard to get them to go the f away. <laughs> Hell yeah! What's that? Old houses? Yeah, okay. That was not a creek. You do have your fugitive in hand, after all. He's lying! Everything he says is enough out of you. Shut the fuck up, berries and cream! Help! <laughs> no, 
God damn it. No, don't do that. That's just what everybody expects. Come on, buddy, you got this. The gun! Oh. Also seven years ago. And one day, I'm gonna surpass you. Then I'm gonna be the world's greatest swordsman. Mm. But you wanna beat me? You better be ready to kill me. Sore loser. I'm not leaving your side. Not until I know you're safe. No. The bells have rung. And to be absolutely certain, we're not interrupted. Lock the house down. Yes, Captain. Oh, great. What? Ha! <laughs> Built them to keep the pirates out. But now they're keeping the pirates in. Thank God you're still alive. Why wouldn't we be alive? <laughs> Where's his ears? Why doesn't he have ears? If we stay here, we die. We have to leave now. Oh, Miss Kaya. He's not creepy at all. Uh, <laughs> this guy gives me the goosebumps, dude. Just the cadence of his voice, the his the way he carries himself, just all everything about him. Oh no. There you are, Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's her sword. Ready to learn your lesson? Not in this lifetime. Let's end this. That could, that would have been all she needed right there. Shut up and fight. He's going to take this too far. Cuz she's she's not trying I can't be you. Just kill me. Don't be an idiot. You've always had raw skill, and you'll only get better. You'll surpass me in size, strength, and speed. That's dumb. No, that's nature. Soon, all the boys will get taller and stronger. Their arms will be longer than mine. Girls can beat boys, but no woman can beat a man. Don't say I, that. That's not true. <laughs> Don't make excuses. You're my goal. If you just give up, what has all our training been for? Let's fight every day. We'll keep Aww. getting better and stronger until one of us becomes the greatest. Do that for me? I, Rowan Ozoro, thought to fight, train, and kick your butt every single day. And I, Shimotsuki Kobina, thought to fight, train, and kick your butt every single day. What happens to her, though? What was that straw hat? You got something to say. Oh! <laughs> Eat shit. I know just like a cat, he's playing with his food, but he could z use his zip zoom ability to search this place a lot faster. One would think. Sensei, I was just waiting for Kuina. Do you know where she is? Kuina is. Mm. 
What what happened? There was an accident. She's gone. She can't be. We made a promise. What what happened though? It's maybe completely unintentional, but I like that, you know, he takes her sword with him. That's the one he saves for last when he needs an extra boost of strength, but also he he that's the one he holds in his mouth. His mouth, which made the promise. I don't know if that's intentional at all, but that's it. immediately what I started thinking about. Please give me the honor of allowing me to carry Queen a sword, because Queen Anne and I made a promise. Become the world's greatest swordsman to ever live. And it's up to you to fulfill that promise. For you and for her. I want to know what happened! It's, it's just... What? God damn it! Ah, oh, All the same, though, like, I was like, I like it like a perennial, like, state of glossy eyes in this episode, man. Some hype shit going on. And sad. He did it. I want to direct orders to bring you in. You said you wanted to help innocent people. Kai is innocent. You know what? Screw this. You can try it, buddy. God gave us strict orders. He gave you strict orders. Start then go pirates, for it. Or die. Disobey. <laughs> go right ahead. Oh. Oh. Yo. Yes. Never mind. Fuck him up. Sora. <laughs> Hold her right there. By order of the Marines, I'm placing you under arrest. Here it is. The moment. I know you've got a job to do. But I'm gonna go back and help my friends. So don't try to stop me. Mm -hmm. Dude, this kid is really good. <laughs> like, I don't I wasn't. 100% sold in the first episode, but my god, he's such a good main character. Like that look he gave Kobe of recognition, but also at the same time, he's like, I know you gotta do what you gotta do, but that look that said, but I gotta do what I gotta do. And it said it all. Come now, Kaya. Let's not make this more difficult than it need be. Is it weird that this guy kind of reminds me of one of my old college roommates? <laughs> Not in his eccentricism, but just the way he talks and carries himself. Oh, Jesus. Fuck you. <laughs> Is what happened to his friend ever like revealed or is that, is it just, ju is it just as vague elsewhere? Or is that something that would be a spoiler if anybody actually answered? I don't, I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm so hung up on that right now. Yeah. See, he could have instantly just killed them. <laughs> Guys. Hurry! Oh. I completely forgot about these two. <laughs> there she is. She fighting with a mop? Okay, she's got a sword too. Whoa. Dude, I can't I can't speak any more about the music, man. Like it's just it's all great. Whoa!
<laughs> so I guess I was completely wrong about him being the reason her parents disappeared. So I feel like if he was, he would have revealed that in that previous speech. A lifetime of always looking over your shoulder. <laughs> mm. God, this is never get a peaceful night's rest. Good. I always waiting to slit your throat. I love the way they're doing this. Why even your own crew? Not my crew. We've got each other's backs. Always. Until the day they don't. I've killed more crewmates than I care to remember. They're expendable. Every single one of them. Blades do work. Ah! <laughs> oh God. That was a good fall. It's about adventure and freedom. <laughs> you gave up on your dream. No one who does that can ever call themselves a pirate. Luffy's got a very interesting view of piracy. <laughs> but I love it either way. It's like, there will be good pirates, damn it. Looks like you're the one giving Ooh. up now. Ooh. <laughs> I'm done talking. Now I'm listening. Oh, whoa. They didn't plan for that. Did ya? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. It's like, I don't need this one for you guys. Wow, just in this moment, you really can see like the younger him right there from where they did that flashback before. It did a really good casting on that. Dude, I love the way Luffy moves, like holding on to his hat, the way he's kind of like this loosey goosey kind of vibe to just the way he yeah man he just he's springy it's so fitting oh look who's sweating now oh god that's kind of creepy <laughs> said <laughs> what was that one i'm gonna have to go back and check that one i was just like i was like oh i was just like sorry i was just too like distraught by what i just saw dude that entire sequence was fantastic shut the fuck up cat too bad we can't collect their bounty. No, no. The Marines already know where we are. We have to get out of here. Where are we gonna go? We don't even have a ship. You do. Oh, is she gonna go with them though? It is, it's all hers now. Their plan failed, so. And she lost the bet! <laughs> oh, that smug smirk on his face. I love it. Oh, it's also kind of fitting because also just like Mary, it's a ram and he, you know, died trying to do what was best for her. I'm going to need a great sharpshooter. Just like Yasuo. I saw what you did back there. Sticking up for your friends. That's exactly the kind of guy I need on my crew. I figured out which one was Yasuo. He's the one that did the, the ricochet shot. I went back and looked. I expect you're all about the real adventures of Captain Yasuo. Mm 
They think to know I'm the captain, right? <laughs> Oh, Luffy. Yo, look at it go. We need to swap that. We need to get our Jolly Roger on it, though. Yeah, well, don't get used to it. Get used to what? Being right. <laughs> Oh, he got away? Accomplished. Oh no, but Koro's still just gonna get away! I thought they were like, oh, we, we missed that pirate, but we got another one. We are the strong guy. Call me Captain I am Captain Usa. And I am the captain. Call me Captain, captain. Usa. Captain me. And the captain I usually is the also captain. the one that gets the ship and the knows captain. the most about me, the ship. I am... <laughs> <laughs> Is that the first time these two have genuinely laughed? You see, this is what it's all about. From now on, it's all gonna be smooth sailing. Uh. We just, we just, we just left. We just got this ship. Grandpa? What? What? I'm sorry. What? I g g grandpa? Luffy just knows everybody. He knows Usopp's father. He knows fucking Garp. Garp is his grandpa. Is that true, or is that like a nickname? For somebody he knew growing up. Growing up. Growing up. But man, what the? Why? What in the world? Damn. Oh yeah. While I, before I forget, what was that attack he used? bell and he rings your clock with it okay dude this episode was f these last two episodes were fucking good i love this whole little like kind of two-parter with the the mansion with kuro with his little crew and his little attempted coup i still feel like it i feel like maybe they didn't go into it or maybe I missed a line. I feel like it would make the most sense if he was also responsible for the parents going away and he got trapped because their will passed it on to her until she became 18. She would, she had the wherewithal to relinquish that. So he could, it, that would have been the long game, but we never got any of that, which would have played into him being like, hey, you loved your parents. You loved your parents. Where's my dad? I really expected him to be like, well, I fucking killed him, so fuck you, or something. I don't know. I, I In his whole, like, spiel, when he was just, like, kind of trying to goad her on and bait her out, I wholeheartedly thought he was going to also reveal that, but no. And then this episode dove into Zoro's backstory. I gotta say, the, the, the child actor's acting was not very stellar, but that's not what was important about the scenes uh, to me. Um, it was the thematic elements and the, the meaning behind the characters. I love the style of the show. And I've said this before that I think the show goes for style. It's trying to like evoke those comic book manga panels by kind of laying into the broad strokes of these fights, the memorable moments. And I think that's one of the things that kind of works about this though. I don't know if it's fleshed out. I would imagine it would be in the manga and or the anime about this backstory of his. What happened to her? Like she just had an accident. It could be one of these things that maybe this is just as much as we know from that. I don't know if she's a character that maybe there's a mystery. She comes back later or maybe we find out she it wasn't an accident. She was killed by somebody and it becomes this thing. I don't know. But it just seems like we just kind of danced around what actually happened. Even though it's not the pivotal point, the point about it is that he made this promise. They tried to lift each other up and then he lost that uh, fellow climber. And if you're like rock climbing uh, in pairs, at least you like have somebody go up, you have somebody as your support just in case you slip and fall that they catch you, they get locked in. And then you basically kind of uh, leapfrog it up. 
uh, until you get up. You work your way up, your way up together, ice climber style. That's kind of what they were trying to do, but then he lost that support and that put a, a lot of responsibility on him to do it by himself to honor both of their promises. If she can't do it, then it's up to him to fulfill the vow that he made to her. And I loved all of that about it. And plus their fight was really freaking good. I loved all the choreography in this episode though. They even tried to do the little thing where he like does like the circular run and he's like kicking up dirt and does the slide around. Didn't 100% nail it, but I was like, I see what you're doing there. I, I didn't, it was just fun. It was, it was, oh. Uh, the energy in this episode, and then the music in this episode, and then just the Koro stalking them through the house with his just oozy, icky glee. And then Kobe and all of that. I love what they're doing with his character and this conflict of morality that they set up in their first meeting about, you know, what does it mean to be right and wrong or good or bad? And when we put ourselves in these boxes, what does that start to mean? And this is challenging their kind of individual dreams. And it's also like they met, talked about as well. It's putting them at odds. The next time we meet, we might be enemies. But Kobe still sees him for who he is. He's also trying to do what he can from the inside to do the right thing. While Luffy is, yes, a pirate, he's not a bad guy. He's not pillaging. He's not stealing. He's not murdering like the others. He's just sailing a ship looking for treasure. And that's painted a target in of itself. Though he did break and enter into a marine base to steal a map to the Grand Line. I guess he has he does have a little bit on his on his uh voucher for that. But then this realization too about fucking Barry's and Cream's father, um, Captain Morgan, claims to have killed this guy. So what's the story there? Why is he out running around? Did they make a deal? Did he get away? Did he lie about? I mean, obviously he lied about it, but was there a, like a a mutual benefit there between the two? Like, what's the reason behind that? Other than maybe he got away and he didn't want he wanted to save face. But then, is that did that is that what gave Kuro the opportunity to find another way than sailing the open seas? Like he talked about, he was like, "Luffy, is that really a life you want? Always having to look over your shoulder, just always having a bounty in your head, at least being." dead to the public perception, people aren't hunting for him. People believe, like when Usopp went out, I was like, hey, he's Koro of the whatever. Uh, he's in there, he's gonna kill Kai. And they're like, dude, that guy's dead. What are you talking about? And they just, it's just another lie, another fairy tale from Usopp. So like it works to his advantage for people to believe he's dead. And at the same time, it also works at an advantage for Captain Morgan, cause that's a huge pirate. That is off the tail that he gets to be like, he gets a lot over people like, hey, I killed this guy. Because like, I'm the guy that took out so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. But one of these we know aren't true. Are the others even true? I don't know. It puts a lot of interesting thoughts and ideas out there though. Because again, because every step of the way, berries and cream, because we still haven't even got his name, right? I don't feel like I've heard a single person say his name <laughs> out loud. <laughs> And I could be wrong about that, but if they did, I don't know what it is. But he's berries and cream, Nepo baby, and or haircut for me right now. Or Farquad. These are the options I go with. You know, who knows? It's a toss up for whichever one I use in any given moment. But fuck that guy. Because every step of the way, even like he's like, even if you're right, who fucking cares? Like, he's just like, oh my God, he's so frustrating. But the actor is so good at playing this character. That actor is so great at getting these just fucking, I don't even know what you would call it, those expressions, those smug ass expressions is fantastic at it. And then just the, just the animated nature of his face, because he's got one of those faces that is very distinctive, like especially with the, he's got kind of like a wide mouth so he can be very expressive with all of his distance. <laughs> He's just, he's just great. I can't talk enough about the way he animates this character because he feels like a live action cartoon character. And then Kobe, I just sympathize with him so well, because, so much because, you know, he, people haven't believed in him. He's been put down all of his life and now he's getting these opportunities. But at the same time, he still has a heart. And now he's kind of like, well, what do I do in this moment? And he's being conflicted. But he's also got a good sense of not just a moral compass, but just a good sense of things. And I guess that could be equated to that because he got ick vibes from the butler, rightfully so. So maybe it is a morality radar that he's kind of got going on there. But everything about this, 
episode was just tense and fun and energized. Nami coming out of her shell and sticking up for Kai and being the person to be like, no, I actually, yeah, we need to get you the fuck out of here. For someone who in the last episode was just trying to steal from them and was looking for any way out at any given moment, you know, went back for her and like everybody else as well. And same with Zoro, you know, he could have left, he could have left, whatever, but he went back for everybody. We're seeing these, we're seeing Luffy kind of rub off on everybody. And I think that's also very indicative here when we see them kind of in their ship now, hanging out and, you know, they're building a bond and him and Usopp are fighting over who's going to be captain. So like, it's, it's kind of funny though. I don't know. Everybody's got their role. Everybody's got their thing. And I, I love the, what they're doing with this. Like, I don't, aside from the child actor for Zor, some of the child actor acting in the episode being kind of subpar, everything else, I, it's, it's just like, no, it's not enough to hamper any of my enjoyment with the episode whatsoever. Like, that's it. That and the, the like, the little skit, skid thing that they, they did. Which is, again, I, I, I talked about this before, like up until this point, so this is definitely a heavy contender because it's also got larger things to try to execute. One of the things I was also talking about was like the best live action adaptation of an anime that I've ever seen has been the Roroni Kenshin films. And they've done the, the anime slide skid run thing where you're like sideways running against physics. They've done that beautifully in those things. So that's why I was like, I've seen it done better. That's the only reason why I've seen, I was like, huh, on that moment. But that's only like 0.01% of all the greatness in this episode. Like, I'm just, dude, like, I enjoyed the first episode. The buggy episode really pumped me up and got me pretty excited. The third episode just had my blood at a boil because I was just like, where's this going? What is happening? What is, like, it was so interesting. And then it just, mm. and then this one just pushed that to 11. I don't know, man, I'm excited. We're only four episodes in, there's four more to go. And now they're being hunted. They're on the open sea. They have a ship, but now, like Koro warned him, he's got a target literally on his back right now. So we'll see what happens next. I don't really have anything else to talk about. I don't think, I'm just rambling and just singing the praises of this show at the moment. I just had a lot of fun. That's all I gotta say. And at the end of the day, I don't care uh, about, you know, sometimes the technical details. You know, I'll mention it, but what I care about most about what I absorb, what I take in, what I consume as far as media goes is, does it make me feel things? Did I have fun? Did it do what it was set out to do? Did I feel the things that set out to make me feel? And this show so far has been doing those things. I'm having a damn good time. I'm having a way better time than I thought I was going to be. I thought I would enjoy this. I thought it would be okay based on the trailer. I thought I was like, they're putting some effort into this. I enjoyed most of Cowboy Bebop, but this, I kind of expected at least that with this, but this has just been soaring. Open sales so far. And again, it just makes me want to watch the anime. But at the same time, I don't because I, I at the same time, I want to not be spoiled for what they're doing in this. Also, I don't know how much ground they're covering, how much stuff they're cutting out of this either. So I don't have like a frame of reference for that. For you guys who have watched the season, like how many episodes would you say, give or take, this, this first season covers? I'd be interested in reading those comments. Um... Yeah, was was there anything else I wanted to touch on in this? I felt like there was something I wanted to say, but then I kind of went off on that tirade, and I don't remember what it was what I was going to say about it. Oh, another thing I want to say is like the actor that plays Luffy. When they do when they when he calls out his attacks, he sounds like a dub actor voicing over an animated character. Like it sounds like it is coming out of an anime. Like the emphasis that he puts in the words and the, the kind of like way his voice goes up. I love it. Anyway, I'm just, I, I need, I just need to stop. I'm having a fucking good time right now. I was pretty tired when I started this and I am wired at the moment. But guys, what did you think of this? How do you feel about it? 
Sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the following reaction, check those out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Karen, Yori Koriska, Margaret Grace, Melito, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, M. Sephiroth, Jake and Trail, and Eric Official. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.